Hello guys and welcome to a video where I attempt to try to make my own watercolors. Quick little disclaimer, I am getting over probably the worst sinus infection I've ever had in my life, so please excuse my crusty dusty voice right now, but let's go ahead and get into some of the supplies that I've picked up. So my initial thought with this whole process was to use as many natural things as I could for pigment to make the watercolors. So. For the first set of supplies, I went down to a local store here in Orlando and I picked up some different teas, herbs, different things like that. So I found this powdered beetroot, this matcha tea, and this powdered turmeric. Next up, I found this absolutely beautiful spirulina. I'm very excited to test this color out. I'm obsessed with the way this green looks. And then the first tea that I got is this butterfly pea flower. I've never seen this, but it's absolutely beautiful. And then I picked up a blue lotus flower. I can't believe these are natural, it's so pretty. And then the last one is this hibiscus flower, absolutely like pretty like maroon red kind of color. So very excited to see how these turn out. And then for the other kind of natural stuff, I started digging around my house. I actually had a broken terracotta plant. So I crushed that down into a powder. I had some charcoal left over from a fire, um, a lava rock from up front, sage, dill, all these things that I found. So I'm also going to use some of those to grind down into a powder as well. And then also from that shop, I did pick up some gemstones. However, huge warning disclaimer, a lot of gemstones are very toxic, such as amethyst, when you're grinding them down into powder. So just be very, very careful when you're researching, uh, working with new products and items and things like that. I do have a mask, which I will be wearing from start to finish when I'm working with these. So just be careful when you're uh, experimenting with these new things. And then some of the last supplies that I needed was a medium binder. Now I went ahead and picked up one that's pre-made. You can make your own, but I wanted to save some steps where I could. And then even though mine is a pre-made binder, I do need to dilute it with some water. So I also just have like a little dropper so I can control how much I'm putting in there. I also picked up this glass muller off of Amazon, which I can link down below if you guys are interested in trying this process yourself. And last but not least, I have the two watercolor palettes. Now, I actually thought this was only going to come with one, but it came with two of them. And I believe it was between like 15 to 20 bucks, which I thought was a pretty good deal. So I will also link that down below if you guys are looking for like a travel palette. All right, so we have run through all of the supplies. Let's go ahead and get into this process. One more thing I did want to interrupt real quick and talk about is when I was researching how to make these watercolors, there really wasn't a lot of information online as far as ratios of like pigment to binder to watercolor. Uh, I noticed that a lot of artists through trial and error kind of come up with their own ratios for their specific paints and things. So I was also trying to work through that. And then I don't know if it's because these are um, pigments from like you know vegetables and fruits but they were a lot stickier than I anticipated so I was also trying to work with that as well but there was a learning curve you can kind of see here it's more like a jelly um, than like a smooth pigment but it was still fun nonetheless so let's go ahead and jump back into it
All right, guys, so it is a few days later and the watercolors are finally dry. So let's go ahead and swatch these bad boys. All right, so I think I want to start off with the natural pigments and then we'll kind of get into like a little montage of the other ones because I feel like the natural ones need a little bit more um, explanation, I guess. So the first one that we'll start off with is the mustard right here. So this is literally mustard from my fridge that I dried out and then ground into a pigment and a lot of the natural pigments let me show you this real quick kind of shrunk down in the palette if you can see like this one here at the bottom the dill turmeric mustard like they all shrunk down significantly more than the other colors in here let's go ahead and we'll kind of reactivate this here here we go moment of truth guys bruh Oh, it's very light. Let's see, can we get a little bit more pigment? Alrighty, so this is very, very light. It still has a little bit of like chunks or pieces. And a lot of these do have that. I wasn't really able to grind them down as well as I wanted. And I also didn't want to spend like a ridiculous amount of time of grinding them. I've read online, like some people spend six hours grinding one pigment. So I was not as dedicated in the process. All right, so next up is beetroot and that is gonna be right here. And again, you can kind of see the consistency versus like a powder. It's a lot more sticky, almost like dried jelly, I guess, if I had to describe it. Hopefully this one turned out really pretty because the powder was really pretty. All right, here we go. Let's swatch this. Interesting, okay. So I would say this has turned more of a like red brown, um, almost like a dirt color. That one has definitely changed colors. Next up is the terracotta flower pot that broke in my backyard. I really want this one to work out. This one was so pretty. And as you can see, I was able to get a better consistency on this one. Oh, it's so pretty, okay. This is like the best one I've done so far. Guys, look at that one. Look at the difference. All right, next up we have this turmeric, turmeric, turmeric. I don't know. How do you guys pronounce that? So the mustard and the turmeric are very close in color, if you guys can see that. So we'll see. I feel like the turmeric is going to be a little bit more pigmented, though. I like that. Um, it's it's still got a little bit of the pigment pieces in there. You can see like the natural powder. That is so pretty. Moving along, this is the charcoal. So charcoal is kind of interesting. It's the only one that hasn't fully dried. Like, I don't know if you guys can see this. It's almost like a like sticky consistency. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but let's go ahead and see how this color looks. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Oh, I can't believe this was like charcoal in my background and now it's in a watercolor palette. Oh, look at that. That is so cool. The hibiscus I'm a little concerned about is when I was initially grinding it and kind of checking the color, beetroot and hibiscus were extremely close in color. So I did add a little bit of charcoal to that pigment to try to like give it a different color, obviously. But I think in the long run, I might have just messed it up but we'll see you guys can see it's kind of like that beetroot it's got a really like thick kind of sticky texture and it's almost kind of hard to rehydrate definitely not uh the red maroon that it once was it's almost like a light dark brown i don't know how to explain that properly but i don't hate it i just feel like i'm having a hard time getting a lot of the pigment to show up on the paper yeah, it's a little bit difficult to build on. I don't know, I don't hate it. I feel like I could use it for like a landscape or for a brown for sure. Okay, so dill is another one I really, really want to work out. Someone else did this online and their dill was just mm, chef's kiss. It was so pretty. If you guys have not seen dill as a watercolor, do yourself a favor and just Google it. It is absolutely gorgeous. I like it. I wish it was more, again, more pigmented. And I'm sure that's my fault. Like I said, guys, this is such a in-depth process. Um, and it's really interesting trying to find your, your own personal ratio to pigment and 
and binder and water. So I do like this color. I wish that I could get kind of that more opaque look to it. We'll try again. Let's see if we can get a little bit more build. A little bit, still very, very light. Okay, I might have to revisit this one again. I love the color. I just wish it was mm, more intense. All right, next up is this Chrysocala question mark. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but this was one of the gemstones that we crushed down and look how absolutely pretty this little teal color is. So I think it'd be really cool if this one worked out. It's a little bit too much water. Oh, I just think it's so cool. Like this was an actual gemstone and now it's in a palette. That's insane. Look at it on the paintbrush. It's so pretty. Okay. Look at that. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. I want to add a little bit more water here in the end. Guys, look at that. That is so cool. I know I'm probably repeating myself a lot, but I just can't believe that this is like things that I made. So next up is going to be the matcha. If you guys remember, this one started as a powder. So I have a little bit more um, hope for this one that I didn't f it up as bad as the other ones. Okay, that one's so much better than the dill. A little bit more water in here. All right, let's try to build on this one. Look at that. Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, well. Would you look at that? Yeah. All right, guys, we are down to the last three. The one that I was most excited for is probably this spirulina. The color on this one is just so pretty. Like that powder was insane. All right, so here we go. This is the spirulina. She's so pretty and she knows it. So again, I don't know if it's because it's natural. Obviously it is a little bit more sticky, but losing my voice again. Ah, guys, it's been like three weeks. All right, so we have two left. Um, something really interesting happened with this butterfly pea it kind of completely changed colors from what it was it was definitely a lot more purple when i initially made it and it touched shrunk down to nothing so i have a feeling this one is not going to be as amazing as i wanted it to be you know but that's okay oh my gosh oh no no god please no 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 Oh, that is so sad. Final is this butterfly pea flower. Hopefully this one is uh, really pigmented. Uh, hopefully I did it justice. Again, I know a lot of this is probably my fault. So here, here we go. I can't believe this is a flower. That's insane. This was a little hard to break down and mold, but let me know down below, guys. What is your favorite natural color that I made? I don't know. I'm really stuck between spirulina, butterfly pea, and the terracotta. I, I don't know. It's hard for me to choose. Let's swatch the rest of these. Okay, so this is a extremely rough drawing with a bunch of pencil lines, um, but this is what I've come up with. It's a little frog riding a flamingo raft down a lazy river. So let's hope this works out. Like I said, I know that I'm a terrible watercolor artist. Um, I have a lot to learn with this medium, but I'm excited to give it a try. So let's get started.
All right, guys, and here is the finished product. Now, is this exactly in a watercolor style? Mm -hmm. Did I still use watercolors? Yes. So you let me know down below. Does this count? What do you guys think? I'm actually really digging this little frog guy that I made. So maybe I'll make him into a sticker. Anyway, thank you guys for joining for another video and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.